Yeah, I think we probably can. Um, hello, hello, everybody. You're all very welcome to this talk about studying music in Trinity College. Uh, my name's Martin Adams. I'm an associate professor at, of, in the music department, and this is my colleague, Dr. Matthew Barnson, who's uh, one of our composition teachers. And if anyone has questions about composition or indeed about some other thing, he will answer them. Um, to study music in Trinity College, you can take part in two programs. Uh, the first is single honor music, where you study music throughout the four years. Um, and the second is music as part of the two subject moderatorship program, in which you can study with a range of subjects which are listed in your um, brochures and in the uh, college calendar. Now, the two subject program and the single honor program follow essentially the same lectures and range of options that are available to single honor students. So you will be in the same classes with the same people, essentially doing the same thing, but two subject people have a lower workload. And I just thought it would be handy to start off with um, a statement about the what's on in the first year and take it from there. But before I do, just to say that in music, we, we are based in House 5, which is in the front square, right next to the front arch. We're the only academic department left working in front square, and it's uh, very nice. One of the things that does happen is that our lights work. Uh, so um, I'm sorry about this, that we're in the um, outer darkness here but our lights work. We have very good music technology facilities, excellent listening facilities, and so <laughs> forth. It's an old building, but it makes for a very pleasant atmosphere in which to work. Um, and up there on the overhead, you can see the six mod module areas that every student in the first year follows. Now, this list of modules is intended to give all students a fundamental grounding in the basics of music, both as an academic subject, but also basics of musicianship. That is, things to do with understanding music, being able to listen critically, being able to write harmony and counterpoint and so forth. So there they are, history and repertoire, in the first year, that is basically the study of 17th and 18th century music. And then aural and keyboard skills, that is aural training, and learning at the piano to play harmony, to score read, and so forth. In other words, that aural and keyboard is intended to be a sort of practical outworking of number three, which is harmony, written harmony, four, counterpoint, five, music technology. We have the best undergraduate facilities in music technology in this country, without any question, and um, you will be able to have full benefit of those. And music analysis. And one of the nice things about studying music here in House 5, in Trinity College, is that you have 24-hour access to all these facilities, including the computer lab and everything, um, for about 363 days of the year. <laughs> so you can be in here on Christmas Eve doing your counterpoint exercises or whatever you want to do, okay? Uh, now, that list is perhaps handy because it gives you an idea of some of the flavors of things that can be followed through in subsequent years, because it's a four-year program unless you choose as a two-subject student to finish with music at the end of your third year. Sorry, folks who are standing, if you want to come and sit, sit down, please feel free. Um, your two-subject students have a choice. They, they, well, they have to make a decision that they will finish one of their subjects at the end of their third year. So, 
history and repertoire, that follows through. There's a, mo a module called history and repertoire throughout all four years. So you will basically get um, lectures in the history of music and based around works of music running really from over the last thousand years and more. <coughs> but gradually, from the second year onwards, all students can begin to specialize should they choose to do so. And the three areas of specialization are composition, musicology, and music technology. Now, what do those mean? First of all, musicology, the word means the study of music. And so it's very broad, and we take a broad view of what this means. Um, the one area in that which is connected to musicology in particular is history and repertoire. And studying musicology means you will do a whole range of things, such as historical studies, you, can, you will learn the principles of music editing, how to prepare an, an edition. You will do things in studying specific periods. You will learn critical thinking about music, about what people have said about music, what they think about contemporary music, and so forth. In other words, it's very wide-ranging. And uh, composition, that is free composition, which begins in the second year. And Dr. Barnson, do you want to say anything about that? Sure, so the composition course goes over three years. Uh, everybody takes the introductory course, the second year. I mean, that's one of the nice things I think about the program is that you actually, in your second year, begin to get to sample each one of these. You get to sample music technology, sample composition, sample uh, musicology. Uh, you're, you can choose in your third and fourth year to composition and you then you spend more time on it and you're even in your fourth year your major um, senior project can be a composition portfolio um, we, we don't advocate any particular style we're very open-minded to what you might want to do um, but we do uh, want you to, de to develop uh, a style and a voice that is both unique and um, eloquently um, creative so so that's what We also uh, want you to hear your music performed. The portfolio, uh, we teach you uh, how to write scores that are at a professional level. And we uh, attempt to have all of our students' works performed by um, our in-house ensembles and our relationships that we have with, uh, with, <coughs> with ensembles uh, in, in the city. Thank you. Um, I'll come to some more things related to that in a minute. But as Dr. Barnson has said, you can choose gradually to specialize in one of these three areas. But if you want to do a bit of everything, you can do that as well. Um, choosing to do, one of the things that we're very proud of, I think, in, in the course here, is that choosing to specialize in musicology or or music technology or composition does not mean that you cannot do the other things. So, for example, you could choose to make composition your major and still do a minor in music technology. You could choose to do uh, musicology as a major and do a minor in composition and so forth. So it's a very flexible program, especially from the third and fourth years. And so you can play to your strengths in that. Um, I'd like to commend again the point that Dr. Barnson has raised about having the resident ensemble. We have the ensemble Avalon as a core group who can perform music for us. They're experienced professional players, and they interact a great deal, especially with <coughs> composition students. But they're available to all students. If you want a violin lesson or a piano lesson, you can get one from them. Um, the staff. Um, there are uh, seven members of staff on the books, plus a rake of part-timers. Um, and you can look these up in the calendar. 
And all the staff, are, even if I say so myself as one of them, we're all internationally recognized in our areas. Isn't that true? Yeah. Look, at, look his name up, Matthew Barnson, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so what are the advantages of studying music at Trinity? Well, as I hope I've explained here, there's an incremental program. In other words, each year builds successively on the next, and we do it to a very high standard. This has been recognized by um, other academic staff who visited us, and they've been consistently praised the level to which our course goes. A thorough grounding in the basics of musicianship, that is, a good ear, um, an ability to hear music, to listen critically, to think <coughs> about music, to talk about music. Not easy to talk about music. So you need to have the language that will enable you to do that. And I'd like to think that we provide that here. One of the most important things is that we have a lot of small group teaching. And that is something that the, we in the music department, but Trinity College as a whole, has hung on to very, uh, very jealously because we think it's important. And especially in a subject like music, which is very personal, you know, where you engage very directly with students and teachers, small group teaching is essential. So the largest groups you would ever be in would be for in things like lectures for history and repertoire, where you might have 30 students. But in others, you will be down to groups of four, five, six, this sort of thing. Um, performance groups are the high standard. As I've sa said before, um, we, we have for professionals in Ensemble Avalon, we call in other professional players from time to time, um, especially in connection with the Composition Center, which is, um, operates from the music department. Um, and there are groups that are connected with the department itself, such as the Node Ensemble, which again is run through the Composition Center, a student group that performs music by the students, and sometimes other music as well. Um, there's a, a departmental run choir that I, run, I look after, and there are a number of other independent groups, and then Trinity as a whole has a huge number of performance societies that are run through the Students' Union, from orchestral society, college singers, choral society, and so forth. And finally, I'd say that the, uh, one of the great advantages of studying here is that this college has, and this department, has the strongest record of any in this country in get, getting graduates out to an international level. Music graduates do exceptionally well, and I want to stress that because people often ask, ask us, quite rightly, what can I do after this? Well, you can do a huge range of things. Most graduates work in music in some way or another. But the, it, music is such a diverse field that there are so many areas you can work in. So the proportion of graduates who go on to high-level work at an international level, be it in academia, in composition, in music technology, in arts administration, <coughs> In performance, we have a number of high-level professional performers who've been through the department and who will say that they value being able to understand <coughs> the music they are performing better because of the training they receive here. Okay, so um, over to you. Any questions you might have? Don't be shy. Yes. The interview process, right. Um, the, you mean the admissions process, yeah? Yeah, the admissions process, if you're um, an ordinary school leaving undergraduate, it works like this, that you have to apply by, I think it's the 1st of February, is that right? Yeah, thank you, the 1st of February, 
So we, we don't actually handle this. The college handles it centrally. So I, I, correct me if I get anything wrong, but I don't think I will. Um, the, you have to apply by the 1st of February. <coughs> All students who apply to do music in Trinity College will be called to an entrance test which this year will take place on Saturday, March the 24, thank you. <laughs> March the 24th. Now that is subject to confirmation, but we can see no reason why it should not be that day. Martin? Yes. Is there, is there not also um, a practice exam that they can take today if they want to try their hand out on it? Thank you. Thank you. I don't know where it is, but it's I'll here. tell you about it in a minute. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there is. Yes. The, um, the entrance test will take place on that day, and you can today attend um, a session, a trial, a, a, a demonstration of what that entrance test involves in House 5 at 2 o'clock, I think. 1 o'clock. Thank you. You see, I, we don't hold them. Thank you. One o'clock. Yeah, okay. So in House 5, go across Front Square, and you'll see there's a notice outside, and that'll take you into a room, which will be one of the rooms where you do your larger lectures. And Amy Ryan there, who's one of the teachers on Aural and Keyboard, she will give you a demonstration of that. Um, after you've done the entrance tests. The entrance tests are marked, and anybody who achieves the pass mark um, is invited for interview. Now, the pass mark is normally 40%, but there is a compensation system in operation. It's a bit too complicated to explain here, but if you look on the college web, under the music department's pages, you will see it described in detail there. And on those pages, you can also get copies of previous entrance tests. Uh, those who pass the entrance test are called for interview, and the interviews take place in um, late April, early May. We haven't, I, ha I haven't yet been notified of the exact date, but it's around there. It's in April. And on the basis of that, some people will be offered a place, some won't. Those who are offered a place, you then go into a, a general pool and the places are offered finally to those who achieve the highest points. Does that answer the question? Is there a practice event? Please? No, you don't need to play your instruments at, at our, our tests. Yeah. Okay. Yes? Uh, what is the interview in the, in the interview, we, we generally, um, it's not a test to, uh, it, that you have to pass a hurdle in the interview. A large part of the interview just consists of us talking about the options that you wish to pursue, yeah? Um, but then in particular with students who have marginal marks in the entrance tests and have got in by compensation, we would usually give them a chance to say, for example, uh, do a little bit of aural testing there and then. Because they accept that mu music's just like this, and especially in the pressure of a large group like that, you don't always do yourself justice, yeah? Does that answer the yeah. question? It's, they're short, just 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. Any other? Yes. Uh, yes, the admissions quota for single honour is 20 students, and for uh, two subjects, it's 10. Yeah. Yes. During the course, will you be able to play your instrument? During the course, will you be able to play your instrument? Um, as part of the course, you mean? Yeah. Um, to some extent, uh, the... There are practical components to the program um, which are rooted initially in the aural and keyboard area. But in your third and fourth year, 
you cannot do a recital on your instrument, yeah? And that goes for a component, uh, proportion of your degree. Does that answer? Yes. Yeah, thank you. And if you play an instrument, I think you'll find ample opportunities uh, among your colleagues. I think especially, you know, composers, they, they play each other's music. If you're, if you're handy at an instrument, you might very well be playing them Yes. Any other? Yes. Yes, do you have an opportunity to go abroad? Yes, you do. Um, we do participate in, there are two ways of doing this. Um, there are, we do have quite a lot of things connected with Erasmus connections with other colleges in other countries. We have a couple of students who are away at the moment and because of the nat because music <coughs> teaching varies so much from country to country, what we do is we establish a sort of personal menu <laughs> for you with the other college. Yeah. So students quite often do that. They might do their second year or their third year um, in the Erasmus program abroad. Also, what is quite common, and I think it's probably more common in the music department than many others, Students quite often take a year out to go and study music in some other place and then come back to finish the degree. A couple of years ago, we had two people who went to France and did just that, you know, and it was a great benefit for them, and we encouraged that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah, you would have to negotiate with the two departments to do that, yeah? But most, it, it's usually possible, yes. Does that answer? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Dr. Barnson, do you want to say anything? No? Okay, well, thank you all very much. Uh, One o'clock in House 5. Thank you for reminding me of the time. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me about that. What was it? The 23rd, do they say? 24th. Hello. Yes, we're here. To, we, we can answer questions personally, if you like, now. Yeah. <coughs> No, we, we, what, what we can do, we do we, apart from Ensemble Avalon, who will do that um, for you, but th there are, they're here for six weeks in the year. But if you want regular, say, weekly lessons, we can organize that. Um, there are a number of ways. We, we have people that we can recommend people to, but you have to pay for the lessons yourself. Ensemble Avalon. Yes, it is, yeah. Yes, they can they, they will give you lessons. What do you play? Violin, yeah, well we No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay, fine, thanks. Yeah. It's it's predominantly academic and compositional. Yeah. The the practical elements um, are either the recital in the third and fourth year or um, well, and also the arrow and keyboard, but um, other things are sort of connected to it. But to get to for academic credit, the recital is the main. No, no, the, the instrumental lessons aren't included in the in the program. Though you can take advantage of ensemble Avalon when they're here.